Okay, here we go again. If you remember the last thing we were talking about in our um, previous session, we were talking about the, the relationship between, um, you know, um, his homework, history, education on the one hand, and music on the other hand, and how these two elements contribute to the shaping of his Vukanis, of course, consciousness. And um, um, the last thing was when he started thinking about his friend Doxy and how Doxy throws knots of hair in fire and he starts dancing, etc., etc. And suddenly Vukani has this desire to uh, to see the books on the disc aflame, as he says. And uh, of course, he couldn't do that. He brought the lab, uh, the the table lamp down um, closer closer to the books, but they didn't burn. And suddenly, he sees the violin. So we have the homework, books, education, and suddenly the violin. And then he saw his violin again and felt the sensation of fear deep in his breast. All right. So notice music is not supposed to uh, create fear. Not at all. But what do we have here? As soon as he sees the violin, he felt or he feels a, sen a sensation of fear in his chest or his breast. So he doesn't like the violin because he's now expecting his parents with their visitors to come into his room and ask him to play the violin, but he doesn't want that. So the question is, why doesn't he want that? Why doesn't he enjoy it? Notice he did not choose to play the violin. He did not choose the violin as an instrument. It was imposed on him by his parents, his mother in particular. And as we said last time, his mother represents authority. So here we have this story um, acting as a form of resistance, yes, to colonialism uh, and apartheid, but also to other forms of authoritarianism authoritarianism, including parental authority represented by, uh, by, by the mother here. Are we clear? And, and this is what creates um, fear. Fear in uh, deep, actually fear in his, in his breast, that kind of authoritarianism. All right, um, and now we move to the next paragraph. He looked at the violent notice. Here we have fear and here we have dread, right? Is this clear? As something that could bring, and that is what I'm interested in. So violent could bring both pain and pleasure at once. You see, it's like, you know, sort of contradictory feelings. It's pleasure because music is supposed to bring uh, pleasure, but also pain for the reasons I have just discussed with you. It is imposed on him. He feels ashamed of himself, himself uh, you know, playing the violin in front of people. He's a shy, boy also so it's both pain and pleasure this is what the violin creates 
it was like the red dress which Miss Yende Mm, their class teacher in standard four occasionally wore. So this is the feeling that was created uh, by the violin. The same feeling that he felt him and other students when Miss Yende, their teacher in standard four, wore her red dress. Of course, the color is important. She had once said to the class, when I wear this red dress, children, know that I will not stomach any nonsense that day. Know that I will expect sharp minds. I will expect quick responses to my questions and I will expect absolute uh, seriousness. And I shall use the stick with the vengeance of the God of the Old Testament. All right. You know, she has that strong personality. And so don't give me nonsense. That's what she said to the students. Okay. Again, another form of authoritarianism. You understand what I'm saying? authoritarianism authority authoritarianism okay i need definitions yes sabaya shabab all right authoritarianism here we have um, sort of different forms of authoritarianism represented in this story in addition to colonialism in addition to apartheid all right Okay. Um, what am I supposed to do here? Okay. So, that dress, which dress? Miss Yende's red dress which like the violin brought both pain and pleasure at the same time <laughs> it was a deep a deep rich velvety red that gave the impression that the dress had a flowery fragrance as if he could smell it the smell of flowers so that is pleasure Yet, because it signaled, because it signaled the possibility of pain, it also had a dreadful repulsiveness. You see the contradiction, the contradiction here. So repulsive, and at the same time, a nice feeling. Vukani tried to brace himself for the coming of the visitors. So that is the problem here. Literally, he's afraid he doesn't, he doesn't want them to come into his room. It was always like that. It was always like that. Every visitor, aha, it was always like that. Every visitor was brought to his room where he was required to be doing his school work. Okay, he, he, he was supposed to be acting like a good boy. Quote, unquote, inverted commas. Good boy, obedient good boy, who would never, never dare to say no to his parents. Okay, he was supposed to be obeying orders, obeying, following instructions. So every single time, notice it's Friday evening also, he's supposed to be going out with, the, with his friends, but no, he's doing his homework. And it is not that, it's not the first time. No, every visitor was brought to his room. 
where he was required to be doing his school work or practicing on the violin. You notice? Notice here, what do we have? School work, education, okay? Uh, let me how to underline this. Okay. Okay. School work or the violin. Notice the violin or no? and then yeah, school work. All right. The source of his dilemma, or rather the sources, if they if they are two different things. Then he had no look at this, he had to entertain these visitors with violin music. It was always an agonizing, notice how many times, you know, for example, he said, um, initially he said, you know, agony, uh, pain. All right, and now what do we have? Agonizing nuisance, which is like nonsense. I mean, every single time he's, you know, the family, the, the parents ask him to entertain the visitors by playing the violin. To be an unwilling entertainer, unwilling entertainer, which means they force him to do it. What would happen if he should refuse to play? Now that is extremely important. Are we clear? He's raising an extremely important question. And that is the beginning of the formation of critical consciousness. Now he doesn't say it, he doesn't say no, but he's questioning what he's doing. And that is the beginning of the formation of critical, critical consciousness. Okay, pay attention. That is extremely important because you can say that, yes, he has passive consciousness, passive consciousness. Okay. He has passive consciousness and he's moving away from that passive consciousness by raising some questions about defiance. First, he has to understand these conditions in order to understand, or rather in order to be able to transcend, to go beyond this passive consciousness. You don't just say, oh, one, na one night you go to bed and the following day you wake up, you know, a different human being, a different person. No, you have to question things. You have to question things by raising critical, critical questions. So now he's raising this question. I mean, he says, what if? What if I say no? What if I refuse? What would happen if he should refuse to play that night? Okay, what would happen? Now that's our story. Because if he refuses to play, that would be a different uh, Vukani or Vukani with a new, with a new consciousness. So he knew what his mother would say. Okay, let's see now. This is very important, ya sabaya, or ya shabab. Okay? Questioning his reality. Clear? His mother would say, uh, what his mother would say, it was the same thing every time. His eyes swept around the room. So we want to know what his mother would say. He was well provided for. 
So she said, well, I gave you everything. She would say, I gave you everything. You are very well provided for. There was the beautiful disc. Notice the materialistic life that the mother celebrates. And she wants her, uh, she wants her children to be like her. That will become very clear when we come to the confrontation between Tebocho and the mother. So there was the beautiful disc on which he did his work. Okay. Bookshelves full of books, including a set of Encyclopedia Britannica, a reading lamp on the desk, two comfortable easy chairs, a wardrobe full of clothes, his own portable transistor radio, a violin and a music stand, a chest full of games, Monopoly, chess, and many others. So that's what the mother would say. This is what you have. I bought you all these things. What are you complaining about? Okay. His mother never tried, never tired of telling him how lucky he was. Uh, was he really lucky? Is it about materialistic things? Is it only about having a disc and having shelves, etc., etc.? Is that the whole picture? Or that is only one part of the picture? But the fact that she's saying these things is a reflection of her class ideology. Class ideology. She belongs to the middle class. There is not, notice this here, there is not a single boy in the whole of Soweto. Soweto is the township, the township where they live, a black township, including here in Dube, who has a room like yours. You see, all the other black boys are very poor. They don't have the things that you have. So it's like us when we buy, you know, um, a new mobile phone, a culture of consumerism. You know what I'm saying? A culture of consumerism. Consumerism, all right. And Materialism, very, very materialistic, very materialistic. Okay. This room, okay, can you, all right. Uh, so can you count them for me? How many boys have the same things like you? How many black African boys from Soweto have or have a room like yours. Can you count them? Never. You are the only one. This room is as good. Notice here is the problem. Here is the complex. Here is the complex. Uh, how to do that? Okay. This room is as good as any white boys. Now that is what is interesting, she has an inferiority complex, inferiority complex in relation to other races. In fact, in relation to the white colonizers. Inferiority complex, okay? All right. This room is as good as any white's boy, any white boys. Isn't it exactly like Ronnie Simpson's? Of course, Ronnie Simpson's, that's a white boy. You yourself, you ungrateful boy. This is the mother talking to her son. Have seen that room. You have seen that room when we visited the Simpsons in Parktown North. Parktown North is a white suburb, a white neighborhood in Johannesburg. 
only white people live there. Of course, upper middle class. Okay, now this is extremely important. Yeah, Shabab, we are Sabaya. You Kafir children. Kafir is a word similar to um, nigger, which is a terrible racist, racist word. But they use it in South Africa, but it doesn't mean this, you know, as we have it in Arabic, kafir. No, it means, unfortunately, it's a racist word that means, you know, dirty, black, etc., etc. All right. It's like when Israelis want to insult us, they say, you Arab, the same meaning. Nigger, the same meaning. All right. Terrible, terrible word based on racist stereotypes, based, excuse me, on racist stereotypes. Okay, definitions, yes, Abayo, yes, Shabab. All right, racist stereotype. That's what, always ungrateful. So that's what the mother used to say to them whenever they complained. Okay. What did all this really mean to him when it brought so much pain? Notice he's questioning this reality. If this is something that I don't like, when they asked me to play the, the violin, when they asked me to play the violin in front of other visitors, it only brings pain. So he wants to know why. Everything the mother is saying doesn't mean anything to him. He wants to understand. He wants to understand his own reality. Vukani remembered what teacher Maseko. Okay, this is the second revolutionary character. Ya Shabab, ya Sabaya. Teacher Maseko. This is very, very important character. Okay. Uh, how do I do this? Okay. All right. Vukani remembered what teacher Maseko had said at assembly one morning. I want you to remember all of this. This is a fascinating sentence that I myself use sometimes when I write articles. And as a Palestinian suffering from Israel's apartheid, Israel's colonization, Israel's settler colonialism, I always remember this. Look what teacher Maseko, this great character had to say. He's a teacher. Don't forget this. You will become teachers. What are you going to teach your students? Only English, this is a boy, this is a girl, that's a window. Yes, everybody can learn the language, but you need to help develop their consciousness, create that critical consciousness. Let's listen to what teacher Maseko has to say. Children, I would rather be a hungry dog that runs freely in the streets than a fat chained dog burdened with itself and the weight of the chain. Oh my God. Oh my God, I really hope that you are concentrating while you are listening to this one. This is fascinating, fascinating. Children, I would rather be a hungry dog that runs freely in the streets than a fat chained dog burdened with itself and the weight of the chain. We say, I don't know who said it. I think it was Ghassan Kanafani. I'm not sure. Thuru, 
فلن تخسروا سوى القيد والخيمة I don't know which one of you يا صبايا said last time it's like إن عشت فعش حرا right the same thing children you see how many times I'm repeating it because I love it I love it this is what education is supposed to be about and this is why I'm telling all the time I'm telling you I want you to be conscious I really want you to learn something something from this children yes abaya we are shabab I would rather be a hungry dog that runs freely in the streets than a fat chained dog burdened with itself and the weight of the chain whenever the white man tells you he has made you much better off than africans elsewhere in this continent in africa tell him he is lying before god wow 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 compare this to his homework to vokani's homework the homework question is about how the white man brought peace and prosperity to south africa but look at what teacher maseko is saying he's saying whenever the white man tells you he has made you much better off than africans also elsewhere in this continent tell him he is lying before god so whenever israelis tell us you always see israeli spokespeople on uh, tv channels on al jazeera al arabia sky news lying saying that palestine was a desert before they came to it and they say that they made the desert boom they also say that this was a land without a people for a people without a land that they brought civilization to this part of the world and exactly like what mr teacher maseko had said at assembly one morning till those israelis that they are lying that they are lying that this is a myth a big 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 lie okay i hope you are paying attention so look at the reaction of the students there were cheers that morning cheers they loved it at assembly and the children had sung the hymn with a feeling of energetic release notice this is vukani's consciousness and it's this episode story of teacher maseko changes his mood he becomes happy it's very positive unlike the story of the violin unlike the questions the homework questions he has to answer because mr maseko represents what does he represent this is very important ya shabab ya sabaya revolutionary consciousness you must know this by definition revolutionary consciousness clear he says to his children to his students do not buy the lies of colonialism do not believe whatever they say to you they want to make you their slaves and you have to reject that to say no to that and be yourselves in order to get your freedom clear so here is the first revolutionary character we meet 
an intellectual, of course, a revolutionary intellectual. Clear? Okay. Okay. So they were cheers that morning at assembly and the children had sung the hymn with the feeling of energetic release. I will make you fisher of men. This is, you know, like a revolutionary hymn, a revolutionary song in South Africa under apartheid. Uh, they had so many revolutionary songs like us. You know, when we sing Mawtani, Mawtani, Tal Islaham Nijrahi, Muntasib Al Qamati Amshi, etc. They had fascinating revolutionary songs in South Africa. So the children had sung the hymn with the feeling of energetic release. I will make you fishers of men, fishers of men, fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. All right. Three weeks later, look what happened. You pay a heavy price. When you say no to the authority, you know this very well, it doesn't come without a heavy price. So what happened? Three weeks later, teacher Masek was fired. Okay. The principal, okay, I want you to compare the principal to teach her Maseko. I have already discussed now with you, you know, uh, teacher Maseko's character. Look at the principal. The principal made the announcement at morning, which as some uh, which announcement that teacher Maseko was fired at morning assembly. He spoke in Afrikaans. Now he's a black person, he's an African person, but he spoke in Afrikaans. Afrikaans is the language of the white. Bewares the white people, the white government. You notice though, he doesn't speak in one of the African languages to African students. No, he spoke in Afrikaans always, not only that morning. So he has a slave mentality, like a slave mentality. Very obedient, very obedient. He spoke in Afrikaans always. It's like uh, me speaking to you in Hebrew, Ibrani, Ibri. You understand? He spoke in Afrikaans always, concluding the announcement he said. Okay, now compare this to what teacher Maseko had to say about, you know, he'd rather be a hungry dog that runs freely in the streets than a fat chain dog. Let's listen to what uh, the principal says. Children, ah, listen to this. A wandering dog that upsets garbage bins and ejects, ejects its dung all over the place is a very dangerous animal. Mr. Maseko said what? He said, I'd rather be a free dog. And the principal is saying, a wandering dog that upsets garbage bins and ejects its dunk all over the place is a very dangerous animal. So Mr. Maseko is dangerous. It is a carrier, a carrier of disease, disease and pestilence. Disease and pestilence, these are the seeds, metaphor for what Mr or uh, the ideas Mr. Maseko stands for. Clear? Revolutionary ideas. But for the principal, they represent disease and pestilence. And when you see it, your children, when you see that dog, pelt it with the stones. What should you do to it? Pelt it with the stones was the somber response of the assembled children that morning. Vokani, oops. Okay. Vokani heard another roar. Oh, sorry. Uh, Vokani wondered whether teacher Maseko was that dog. Of course. A free man. 
a free man, but why give, why give that metaphor, a dog? Because um, they are under a brutal, or rather the brutal system of apartheid. But how could anybody pill teacher Maseko with the stones? Aha, because teacher Maseko was revolutionary and nobody could do that to him. He was such a nice man. Vukani heard another roar of laughter from the living room. Okay, this is Yasabaya, a stream of consciousness. He remembers, he goes to the, to the past, remembers Mr. Maseko, everything is happening within his consciousness. We call this, this is style, a stream of consciousness. Definition Yasabaya, okay? Let me write it for you so that you remember. Stream of consciousness, the way he's narrating the story, past and present mix up together. Inside, everything is happening inside his consciousness, simultaneously, simultaneously. And this is, it comes in the form of a flow of narration, flow of narration in Vukani's consciousness, okay? Vuka, oops. So Vukani comes back to his reality now. This, as I said, same consciousness. Vukani heard another roar of laughter from the living room. But why did his mother have to show off? So he's conscious. He's conscious of his reality, but he cannot refuse it. That is the point. Why did his, notice he's questioning. He's questioning his reality. He knows that his mother shows off. Why did his mother have to show off at his expense in this manner? Why? That shows that there is, I would say hope since he is questioning his reality. Notice ya shabab, ya sabaya, many of us just accept our reality as it is the status quo, we just accept it as something given. We just accept it as something given, but we don't question it. And this is why many of us have that kind of passive consciousness. If I come and say, no, we need to do something, it's ah, what can we do? What can we do? It's hopeless, all right? It's, ah, it's hopeless. We cannot get rid of, get rid of occupation. Uh, you know, we cannot, uh, it's impossible for Palestinian refugees to return. Israel is very strong, powerful, etc. Et yeah. Now that is the mentality of the principal, not the mentality of uh, teacher Maseko. But notice Vokani is affected, affected by uh, Mr. Maseko's revolutionary consciousness, and this is why he starts questioning his reality, even about what his mother does to him. This doesn't mean he doesn't like his mother. No, we are not talking about him liking or not liking his, no, 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 no. We are talking about him reject, first questioning, uh, the surrounding reality, which is very oppressive, oppressive reality. First you, re you question, then you reject. And this is why he raises these questions, including this question, why did his mother have to show off at his expense in this manner? That Friday, as on all Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, he had carried his violin to school. Okay. Because he has violin lessons three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. 
The other children at school who are, of course, African, just never got used to it. The violin, I mean, which African boy living in Soweto would be practicing the violin? So students, um, the other children were making fun of it. It was a constant source of wonder and ridicule. They were making fun of it. Here is a fellow about him, Vukani, they would say. Here is a fellow with a strange guitar because they don't know what it is. They don't know what a violin is. Some would say. Others would ask him because it's, it's not part of their African culture. And that is because his mother has an inferiority complex. Inferiority complex, don't forget. Others would ask him to play the current township hits. All right? You know, one of those, it's like uh, what, uh, what they have in Egypt now, Aghan al-Mahrajanat, for example, something like this. They want him to play something like that. Of course, he can't. It was so every day. Then one day had his violin had, okay, let's stop here. Let's stop here because there is an episode that we need to discuss in more details. And I will see you, um, I will send you a link for next week so that we can have a face-to-face -face discussion. You have to prepare your questions, okay? All right, bye.